Hey, hello. Hello, uh, Dr. Wieser. Yes. Good morning. So, Good morning. would you like to try to um, uh, share your screen so you can have a oh. final testing? Let me stop my sharing. Okay, you guys see my screen? Uh, yes, beautiful. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Or you can want to enlarge it. Uh, huh? Put it a uh, slide slideshow so see if uh, you can uh, show the full screen. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, so it working. Yep. All right, I'll stop sharing now.
Eh, hal. Hey, hi, Dr. Cha. Hello, Dr. Cha. Yep, I'm here. Yep. Um, um, uh, uh, can we wait for a few more minutes? Um, sure. Uh, yep. I, I can see that uh, there are many uh, audience uh, that are now joining in. So we'll wait for uh, three more minutes sure. and we can start the uh, webinar. Thank you. And uh, Dr. Shah, I've just um, sent you a message. Can you please check the, the chat box? And uh, don't I have just, uh, the, the only message I see, Jeremy, is uh, good morning, and that's it. Oh, is it? Uh, okay, I should know. Uh, maybe the other one. Hi, Dr. Cha. Yep. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Fan is um, uh, now trying to join the meeting. Sure. So, um, um, I think in this case, uh, maybe we can start with uh, the implantation lecture first. Okay. So, we'll get Dr. Yu to start first then. Yep. All right. So, uh, uh, okay. Patrick, um, please help to um, start the recording. Okay, uh, good morning. Uh, thank you everyone for joining today's APHRS Education Webinar, ICD Module Part 1. My name is Jeremy Yu, the to be the moderator of this section. After today, ICD Part 1, if you also attend ICD Part 2, which is on 19th of September, then you can apply for a certificate of attendance from the APHRS. The pacing and CRT modules have been completed earlier. The video on demand will be available on the APHRS website uh, next week. Today we have uh, invited four experienced um, uh, speakers, including uh, Dr. Pauli Cha from Singapore, Dr. Catherine Fan from Hong Kong, Dr. Bao Yu from China and Dr. Rizawa Suwanogu from Thailand. If you have any questions wanted to ask our speakers, please type them into the chat box in your control panel. We will have time for Q&A after each section. So now I would like to introduce our chairperson, 
Dr. Pali Cha. Dr. Cha is currently a senior consultant and head of the department of cardiology in Tan Tok Seng Hospital, Singapore. He is also the head of the arrhythmia, cardiac electrophysiology, and pacing surface. His special interests include uh, cardiac arrhythmias and device implantations. He has published extensively in these areas in local and international medical journals. Hi, Dr. Cha, may I invite you to deliver an opening message? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jeremy. A very good morning to our global friends and colleagues. A warm welcome to part one of the ICD module, the APHRS Cardiac Rhythm Device Therapy Webinar Series. I'd like to thank APHRS for putting together this wonderful program, as well as Abbott for the, all the necessary support. We have three very distinguished speakers this morning. At the end of each lecture, we will have a five minutes question and answer session. So please do submit your questions online. I do apologize in advance that in the interest of time, we probably will not have the opportunity to answer all your questions. Without further ado, um, allow me to introduce our very first speaker. Um, there will be a slight change in the sequence of the lectures. Um, we will start with uh, Professor Bo Yi. Hey, uh, good morning. I, I can see uh, Dr. Kevin Van. Uh, hey, sorry, uh, <laughs> I have some um, difficulties connecting with the link, uh, uh, the Zoom meeting. Sorry about that. Uh, but now your audio and the camera is great. So um, may I, can we you can to you do hear? the first? Uh, yes, very good. Would you like to do okay. the lecture for us? All right. Okay, I, can, I, leave, I pass it back to you, uh, Dr. Cha. Yeah, sure. So, um, a warm welcome to Professor Catherine Fan, Consultant Cardiologist in Cardiac Medical Unit, Deputy Hospital Chief Executive of Granham Hospital in Hong Kong. She will discuss sudden cardiac death and guidelines for ICD implantation. Professor Fan, please. Thank you. Um, thank you for your kind words and try, let me try to share screen first. Can you find the share screen button, uh, which is on highlighting green color? Seems uh, uh, Dr. Fans uh, need more time um, to do the presentation. Hey, Dr. Cha, uh, how about we can uh, uh, start with uh, the lecture from Dr. Yu? Yep, sure. Hey, hey hi, Dr. Yu. Um, yeah. Good morning. So, so, good morning. Yeah, um, I'm sorry about that uh, because of the, some of uh, the uh, technical issue. So, um, would you like? Would you mind to deliver uh, to deliver the first lecture for us? So, okay. um, maybe let me introduce uh, Professor Yi first. Yes. Um, uh, so, I'm apologies not uh, to our participants for the slight technical glitch. So, we'll start with uh, Professor Bo Yi. Professor Yi is um, Deputy Director of Cardiology Department and Professor of the First Hospital of China Medical University. He will share with us his invaluable insights into the ICD implantation procedure. Professor Yi, please.
Can you see the screen? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, dear Ch Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a great honor for me to have this uh, opportunity uh, to have these lectures. So today I will talk about the ICD implementation procedures. Uh, so uh, there's a saying, device implementation is the time when you embark your patient in the lifelong therapy. So it is time to think about the future. Whenever oh, you implant uh, ICD, Sorry, Dr. Can, can, can you please try to um, share your screen again so uh, okay. my side cannot see the slides. Uh, is it the same for you, Dr. Cha? Yes, I, I can't see it. Okay. Can you see it? Yes, now it's great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so first, the overview of the current status of ICD implementations. So this procedure is very similar to pacemaker implantation. Anyone, uh, if uh, uh, he is capable of uh, implanting a uh, pacemaker, can insert an ICD. But uh, there are many differences uh, existed. So first one, the device uh, and the least choice. For the ICD, you have to ask the patient to decide whether single or dual chamber ICD or single or dual coiled leads, uh, also uh, intravenous or subcutaneous ICDs or WCD. And also you may consider about the maximum energy of this ICD and MRI, MRI compatibilities, also telemetry. Uh, other thing you should think about is the implantation techniques. So it is different from pacemakers. When you implant an ICD, you may prefer the left side exercise and using axillary veins, and also we want to uh, have a better sense locations. Uh, for the ICD patients, uh, most time the patients uh, are in the heart, heart failure conditions, so they are sicker. The complication rate of implantation usually is higher. And if you want to do the DFT test during the ICD implantations, we need more physicians and technicians back up. And for the ICD leads, uh, the failure rate is really higher. The, be careful for the manipulation of fixation. And also for the pocket making, the pocket erosion rate is higher. Usually, you may think about a contoured or thinner shape ICDs and the pocket usually in the deeper layer. For the ICD implantations, we, we divided it into a th uh, three stages. The first one, pre-implanted planning. Uh, the second one is para-implantation and also post-implantation or follow-up. For pre-ICD implantation, uh, you have to do complete clinical e evaluation of the patients uh, including history, physical examination, also the history of arrhythmia, whether the patient has the SVT, uh, uh, Sickle syndrome, so AV blocker, or VTVF. Uh, the patient may have the uh, ECG or electrophysical study data, also angiography data, and the echo. So uh, for the ICD patient, the impo important things you must to know underlying heart disease and the left, left ventricular function because of different heart disease, the ICD trials may be different. And also you may consider about the patient is for primary or secondary prevention. And another thing you need to do before the uh, ICD implantation, you may discuss the, uh, with the patient and the family. In China, most time we need to talk with the family and sign the informed consent paper. That's very important. For pre acid implantation, uh, you have to talk with the patients about the device choice and the later choice. For the device choice, for the sing, uh, single chamber or dual chamber ICDs, you may consider about a uh, uh, need for atrial pacing or whether the patient have uh, impaired AV conduction. And may also the patient, whether the patient is in the hypertrophy cardiomyopathy, and also uh, whether the patient needs CRTD or MRI compatibility and the telemetry at all. 
As you know, the first ICD was implanted in 1980s. In the, during that time, the ICD is so big, but uh, in nowadays the ICD uh, changed to smaller, the size reduced and the shape uh, changed to pocket friendly. So you may uh, choose the device according to the patient body, body shape. For the lead choice, you may consider whether it's a single or dual, dual coil or DX lead or active, active or passive lead. As for SSD or TV, uh, TVSD indication, another uh, like, uh, doctor will give this lecture. I will skip this part. In some patients, we may, uh, you may also consider w, uh, WCD. Uh, WCD used for the for bridging a decision for appropriate acid implantation, such as a patient in post MI or after coronary revascularization or new uh, diagnosis, new diagnosis of the dilated cardiomyopathy. For ICD selection, for sing, you, single or dual chamber ICD, uh, are there any difference uh, from two important clinical trials? We know uh, from Medicare two uh, trials, eight years follow up, uh, follow up. For the mortality, the single chamber ICD is better than the dual chamber ICD or no ICDs. Another important uh, clinical trial is David trials. It is those for the cumulative miss uh, events, the single chamber ICD is better than dual chamber ICDs. So a uh, single chamber ICD is a better choice for most the patient, maybe. A dual chamber ICD, you may consider it in uh, a dual chamber ICD sometimes uh, uh, has a high rate of complication and more costly. So uh, in, right now in these days, most patients may be considered for single chamber ICD. As for the lead selection, uh, uh, as you know, the lead uh, developed uh, in uh, three states. Uh, the first and the second generation lead is the epicardial lead. The third generation lead uh, started from 1993 is the endocardial lead. Uh, for endocardial leads, it can be divided into an uh, active or fix, uh, passive fixation, a single or dual, uh, dual coil. And uh, for the pins, it can be divided into a DF1 or DF4 connectors. Uh, ICD leads uh, is different from pacemaker leads. Uh, ICD leads have a higher defect rate from a study uh, there's nearly 1,000 ICD leads. They follow up the this list for 10 years. You can see at 10 years, almost 20% of the ICD leads are failure. So uh, you may consider the extract, extraction of ICD lead in the future. So that's the biggest part of ICD lead. Uh, actually, uh, there are uh, three most important parts for the adhesion of uh, ICD lead uh, uh, for sub subclavicular veins and SVC also uh, the right ventricular apex. So whenever you uh, withdraw this uh, ICD leads, they may have some problems. So in uh, 2017 HIS guidelines, the uh, some uh, in some situations you may consider of withdraw the ICD lease, not all of the ICD lease. As for the single or dual chamber ICD lease, there are some studies compare the single coil or dual coil ICD lease. So uh, at this stage, no benefit of a dual coil over single coil ICD lease. Uh, theoretically, dual coil lease have a better vector for defibrillation and a better DFT. But uh, there's some different studies showing the uh, dual coil lead may study has, uh, has a higher uh, first time shock success rate. Also, the dual coil leads are more difficult and dangerous to extraction. So uh, at this stage, uh, dual coil leads only be considered in patient expected in a high DFT test. Uh, red side implantations 
as you know, if you implant an ICD in the right side, the DFT may be increased one to two joules. And also ARVC or ARVD, very large hearts. So uh, when you choose ICD, this most patient, a single coil bleed is a better choice. Uh, Pre-operation preparation. Uh, if the patient, you want to give the patient DFT test, you may ask the patient uh, to not have food or drink uh, six hours before the procedures. So uh, routine blood check, uh, blood check, uh, saving and cleaning, and uh, also uh, intravenous cannul uh, cannulation on site of implantation, uh, usually in the left side. Uh, in case of venography for difficult punctures, also you may consider the anticoagulation status in some patient with atrial fibrillation or uh, valve disease, the patient may take in a, a warfarin or no egg. So you, during this time, you have to talk with the patient uh, or cons uh, analyze the clinical data of the patient. If the patient uh, embol embolical events rate, annual risk of umbilical events greater than 5%, uh, you better not stop uh, VKA or non egg Also, uh, during or uh, before the procedures, you may give the patient antibiotics. So there are three most important clinical trials showing uh, pacemaker and different surgery without interruption of anticoagulation may be benefited for the patient. Uh, Pre-operation cat, uh, cat lab preparations, uh, just like the pacemakers, but you have to have external defibrillator connected and also PIC cables connected and you need qualified staff to uh, present. Uh, during the implantation, uh, as for the approach and exercise, a uh, left side approach is preferred, as I said, Right side approach will increase the DFT. And for venous exercise, we have three choices a cellular subclavian or accelerate. The accelerate is preferred. You can see uh, if you're using accelerate means, uh, you have a less chance to damage the, uh, the lease. Uh, if you have some difficulties, you may uh, give the patient a venogram and a fluoroscope get as required. And also left side approach, you can see the uh, angulation, angulation of the leaves is a smaller in the left side than the right side. Uh, for venous access and uh, ICD lead failure, as you know, ICD lead failure is about 20% in 10 years. Uh, so there is a study uh, in the EIC Congress in uh, 2018 uh, you can find X-ray puncture and the syphilitic cut down uh, have a better results. Uh, in a difficulty uh, lead implantations, uh, you may need a venogram to find the stenosis or, or occlusion of SVC. And also uh, you can find some uh, congenital abnormalities such as uh, left side SVC or dextrocardia. That's very difficult to implant the leads. As for the position of RV leads, uh, pre-implantation check helix mechanism and make sure helix withdrawal in case entangled with uh, muscle or tricuspid walls. Sometimes uh, we can uh, have these uh, problems. And during the implantation, you're gently handling a release. Uh, you have two choices, either put the leads into uh, RV apex. It is easier, good signals, and good vectors. But compared to the R, uh, middle or lower septums, uh, the, if you put these, these areas, you may have uh, less likely perforations and more physiological pacing especially for AV block patients. And also, 
uh, for the CRP patients. And fix it, uh, this according to the instruction, uh, usually we train the, the least 12 to 15 rows rotations and ensure adequate slake uh, in case the lead dislocation. As for the ideal ICD lead locations, there are important studies, uh, septal studies showing no difference in sensing or pacing characteristics, no difference in arrhythmia detection and determination. So you can put the ICD lead anywhere you can find. For the positioning of RV lead, the most important thing is we, uh, we need the, the sensing is at least the RV, at least the fine for the bipolar. As for the pocket preparations, uh, we have a two choice pre pectoral or submuscular. Uh, it is different. Uh, for the pre pectoral, it limits the patient trauma, shorter hospital stays, and the less complicated procedures. But you don't want the, the pocket like this. For the submuscular uh, pocket, it's good for a low, low body weight patients, more cosmetic and potentially reduce infection and may lower DFD thresholds. And for the lead suture, uh, use only non-absorbable sutures, loop through tissues first that leaves and do not tear lecture directly to the lead body uh, in, in case you damage the lead. <coughs> For lead connection to device, this is very important because ICD is usually for the uh, DF1 connection. You have three pins. You have uh, for the dual chamber of CRTD, you have four to five uh, holes. So make sure you put the red holes, put the pins in the red holes. So verify serial numbers for each lead and ensure holes in device header are clear. A special attention in DF1 because in DF4, you only have one choice. Uh, for place supplied torture range in grammatic proper to insert a lead into device pores, uh, visualize a lead connector piece past the set screw blockers. Uh, if you are not sure, you can uh, check the insertion uh, under flu fluoroscopy to make sure the pins uh, into the through the holes. <coughs> Uh, you, you can also check connections from programmers uh, uh, through, through the, the impedance. You can know if it, the patient in the high impedance, that suggests it is not properly connected. If in low uh, impedance, that may suggest there is an open circuit. For lead and uh, device placement, that's also very important. You have to rotate the leads and the, the base uh, the ICD in a proper position. Uh, whether you should put a uh, rinse the pocket with antibiotics, there's a uh, uh, for Medtronic, they have a uh, uh, Tetrix abs absorbable antibacterial envelope. Uh, in 1918, uh, in 2018, they published a uh, uh, rapid studies showing uh, with this uh, envelope, it can decrease uh, the infection rate significantly. Then you close the device pocket just like, uh, like pacemakers. Uh, is there a need for defibrillation testing? Uh, for DFT, uh, confirms our property sensing and the fixing of the device, just like a pacemaker implantation, you need to check sensing and the pacing. But in modern era stage, the ICD I usually has uh, uh, 40, 40 joules maximum. So uh, the failure risk is very low. So uh, if you use uh, high power uh, ICDs, probably you don't need a DFD test. During the DFD test, you need uh, anesthetize the patients. And the, this DFD test may cause tra traumatic or pro arrhythmic, especially for the heart failure patients. And also the DFT does not predict the future fixing of the ICD. So 
uh, implanting uh, testing should be done with the uh, active device and ICD should be targeted. So there's a guide, uh, guidelines uh, in, in 2015 from HIS. Uh, in the following situations, you may do the ICD uh, DFT test. So for the defibrillation, uh, defibrillation efficacy testing is re recommended in patients undergoing a sub subcutaneous ICD implantation. That's a class one uh, recommendation. Uh, for uh, uh, transvenous ICD implantations, uh, it's reasonable to omit a defibrillation efficacy testing. It's a 2A uh, recommendation. And uh, defibrillation efficacy testing is really reasonable in patient, patients undergoing a rapid pectoral transvenous ICD implantation or ICD pulse generators changes. The DIV test is 2A uh, recommendation. Uh, for post uh, transvenous ICD implantation, uh, in the Western countries, usually they ask the patient uh, have had a have a best uh, bed rest for two hours, but in China, usually we recommended the patient uh, to have a bed rest for uh, 24 hours. I don't think we have uh, clinical trials uh, to uh, make sure how long stays, uh, how long is a better time for the patients. And uh, I watched it, uh, in the United States, the usually after two hours, I gave the patient uh, uh, cardiac X-ray in pictures to make sure the lead in a good position, then let the patient go home. And also before patient leaving, they check check the the pacing condition, mm -hmm. and uh, also they may uh, give the patient the pressure dressing mm -hmm. if thought of a uh, risk of a uh, hematoma. And uh, in China, the patient usually stayed uh, in the hospital for three to five days, but uh, uh, in the United States, they may go home in the same day. As for the complication of implantation ICDs, uh, during acute stage, the complication rate from NCDR ICD registries, the complication rate is about 4 to 6 percent. The mortality rate is less than, uh, less than 1 percent. For the pacemaker, I don't think we have any, uh, uh, the, the mortality rate probably less than 0, 0 0.1, but for the ICD, because the patient is very sick, so usually you can have some patient died during the procedures. And the, the complication almost the same as a uh, pacemaker, but uh, the uh, perforation rate and the tamponade may be higher, and also the uh, lead uh, dislocation rate may be higher. For the late ICD uh, complications, uh, in, including infection, pocket hematoma, or uh, lead dislocation feature, and uh, uh, venous thrombosis, especially for the CRTD patient, usually in the same veins, the patient may have uh, uh, three to four leads in the same veins. They may cause some problems. As for the follow-up recommendations, uh, advice regarding uh, wound management, you may ask the patient to change the, the to watch the wood every two or three days. And uh, in China, we don't have TCU. Uh, we usually send the patient to a, a CCU for 24 hours. Uh, then we ask the patient to follow up to the clinic every two, uh, three to six months. Uh, when the patient gets sucks, they must go to the clinic immediately. Also, during the follow-up stage, don't forget etiology treatment and uh, antiarrhythmia therapies. There is a study uh, called optical sewing. If you give, give the patient a beta blocker plus amiodarone, it may uh, decrease the, uh, the ICD shock and uh, uh, electrical storm. storm. So uh, for the ICD techniques, uh, I, uh, I make conclusions for uh, for the past time and present time, the comparison we can see the ICD uh, is smaller right, right, right now and uh, 
It's a first line therapy for the VTVF. Uh, and also we use uh, intra, a transvenous single incision and local anesthesia. Often, when the uh, same day case procedures, uh, less uh, complications compared to the uh, old states, the perioptimal mortality up to 9%. And uh, programmable therapy options, you can uh, program the patient with the ATP and uh, I actually will get uh, give a patient painless treatment and for the, as for the uh, single uh, ICD choice I think during this stage we have uh, more data so in single chamber ICD may be better for most of patients a single coil at least may be better for most of patients and right now the ICD longevity is over 10 years I think that's uh, my talk for today thank you for everybody thank you chairman Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yu, for your sharing on the tips and tricks of implantation. Hey, hi, Dr. Cha. Do you have anything you would like to add to this topic? Uh, thank you very much, Professor Yu, for sharing your invaluable insights. Um, maybe just a quick question. In your experience and practice, do you routinely stop the direct oral acting anticoagulants um, before ICD implant, or do you allow the patients to continue on this uh, anticoagulations yeah i i, I think from the uh, study so uh, for the anticoagulant and uh, also the antiplatelet uh, during ICD plantation if uh, for the uh, if the patient uh, in a very high risk of uh, thrombosis like uh, five percent of uh, risk uh, we will uh, continue to the uh, antiplatelet and uh, anticoagulation if the patient is low risk uh, for the uh, coronary heart disease, for the dual antiplatelet therapy, is if the patient is in the uh, primary prevention, we may stop everything. For the secondary prevention, uh, if in the high risk, we'll continue to the dual antiplatelet therapies. And um, um, I can see there is a question. Uh, from our audience, uh, um, uh, he asked about uh, the helix me mechanism. Or um, um, do you prefer to use um, um, active or um, passive lead for the ICD lead? Doctor Yu, any comments on that? Uh, I I'm not sure about these questions. So for helix mechanisms, that means uh, a passive or active lead. Yes, I think. Uh, yeah, which uh, need you usually prefer to use uh, for your patient? Okay. I think for me, uh, uh, after 20, uh, 20, uh, 25, uh, when we have the uh, active list, including pacing lead, I always select uh, active list because it's easier to withdraw the lead in the future. Uh, so as I said in the beginning, when you implant a pacemaker, uh, you have to think about the future of the patient. So uh, for the ICD lease, you may have a 20% uh, failure rate during 10 years follow-up. If the patient can sur survive the longer than the 10 years, the 20% of the patient have, the, have faced the problem of uh, withdrawal of lead. So active lead is a better choice, I think. Thank you, Professor Yu. Um, I think in the interest of